Today we're going to set up a home media server on our Raspberry Pi. Now this is going to be Raspberry Pi specific, but you can still follow along to do the same thing on your Windows PC as the steps will be pretty similar. Essentially, I want to access any media from any device within my household, and for that purpose I have chosen Jellyfin as my media server platform of choice. I went out and purchased an external hard drive. Now this is just an old school hard drive, it's not a new SSD. According to Google, as long as it's USB 3, it should not be a problem when it comes to 4K video streaming. You can generally tell that it's USB 3 by looking at the plug, it should be blue on the inside. We are simply going to plug that into our USB 3 slots, which again are blue as well. For the purposes of media streaming, you don't want to use the SD card on your Raspberry Pi, you want to use an external hard drive instead. We're going to chuck that back into our kitchen with all of our other IT stuff. I really should get a box for this to make it really neat, but we'll give it some power and walk back to the office. Now we're going to remote into that Raspberry Pi and we're going to start setting up our Jellyfin server. This is going to act as the hub or the central point for our media server, which will serve all of the TV shows and movies to the devices that we have. We're going to fire up Tiger VNC so we can remote into our Raspberry Pi. Chuck in our username and password. All right, we now have console access to our server. Go ahead and open up a web browser. We're gonna do a Google search for Jellyfin. Click on downloads. Now we wanna click on server. Select the correct download for the operating system that you have. If you're using Windows, you can simply download the file and run the executable. For Raspberry Pi, I believe we're using a Debian based Linux system. So we're gonna go ahead and follow these installation instructions. We're going to copy this command and open up a terminal and run. Hit enter. Once that's finished, you'll see that it's registered as a service and it started it up. You should now be able to access it via the URL that it gives you. For some reason on the URL it gave me, it didn't put localhost in there. Just make sure you do with the correct port number that it gives you. You will then see this quick setup guide. We're going to go ahead and run through it. So we'll click on next. We're going to set up a default administration account. So I'm going to go ahead and create a username and password. Now we want to go ahead and set up our media libraries. What I am going to do is create three folders within this videos folder. So I'm going to create a movies folder, an anime folder, and a TV shows folder. I'm going to use all one word for TV shows in case adding any spaces mucks things up in the background. Now that we have our three folders created, we're going to go back to our setup page and we're going to add those as media libraries. So for movies, we're going to have display name as movies and we're going to select the folder that we just created which might be easy to just copy and paste the file path. It's not able to find those three folders that I created because it's within my de-olding user directory, which it does not have access to. To fix the folder structure up, we're gonna cut these and put it onto our external hard drive. I accidentally had these on the internal SD card, which we definitely do not want to do. Now the next is to fix the folder permissions. Jellyfin only has access to media slash D olding, but it can't see anything else underneath it. So I'm going to do a chmod777 on our D olding folder. This gives everyone full access to this particular folder. Now we go back into Jellyfin, we can go slash media slash username slash expansion, and we can see those three folders that we created on our external hard drive. So we're going to proceed with setting up our movies folder. Click on OK. For some reason, this screen is a bit glitchy. I don't know if it's because I'm using the Tiger VNC. I will try my best to click on English and select Australia as the country. Going to keep the rest as defaults and hit OK. And I'm going to do the same for our TV shows. And do the same for our anime folder.
Once you're done with setting up all of your folders, scroll down and click on next. Set your country. So I'm gonna go Australia. Click on next. I'm going to leave the defaults and click next. And finish. So we'll go ahead and log in with our username and password that we set up earlier. I'm going to quickly move this video file into our TV shows folder. Now if we click into TV shows, because it's not actually a show there's nothing in here but if I click on episodes I can see that media file that I selected. So we'll go ahead and click play. Now this is just a royalty free video that I downloaded for free online. That is pretty cool, our media server is up and running. So let's now try to connect it. I'm going to go ahead and download the Jellyfin app on my mobile phone. We'll open the app up and select our server. I'm going to select the Raspberry Pi as our server. Chuck in our username and password that we set up. We're going to scroll over to our TV shows folder, click on episodes and see if we can play our work video. And there we have it, it is playing our video. If you've been following along on a PC, you're pretty much done with this tutorial. However, if you're using a Raspberry Pi like myself, I noticed it was extremely laggy and the temperature went up to almost 80 degrees as a home media server, which is not great. I'm gonna go away, work it out, and come back to you guys with a solution. And I'm back, we've figured it out. For full transparency, I followed this guide where I modified some of the GPU settings and enabled hardware acceleration. I'll leave a link here if you would like to follow that. However, I don't believe that is necessary. I think it was trying to do transcoding on the Raspberry Pi and it's just not powerful enough for that to work very well. So what I've gone ahead and done is within my service settings under playback, Yes, I have hardware acceleration enabled using video for Linux based on that guide. However, I've unticked all hardware encoding options. And within my mobile app, I've gone into my user settings, client settings, and changed the video player type. By default, it uses the web player. However, that was very laggy and stuttering when trying to play from the Raspberry Pi. Simply change that to the integrated player or an external player. Now, external player like VLC will work all the time. However, whenever you want to watch something, it will take you outside of the app. So for now, I've selected integrated player. So at least it keeps me within the app whenever I want to watch a TV show or movie. And so far, that seems to have worked. I can now watch whatever I have streaming for my Raspberry Pi in real time. And there is no lag stuttering or anything whatsoever. Now that we've got our media server up and running, the final question we have is, how do we get the files from our local PC onto the Raspberry Pi? For my use case, I will most likely be copying files from my Windows PC over to my Raspberry Pi, and we can use SCP for that. To do that, we're gonna copy this syntax, so we're gonna go SCP, the name of your file, your username, at home.local, so this is the DNS name of my Raspberry Pi, and then finally the two dots, and then the location of where you want to place this. Now we want to place this within our external hard drive space, which is at this file location. Instead of TV shows, we will put this under movies, so we'll grab that, and we'll paste that into our command chuck in our password. That is done and we can now see our file in the correct location. So that's pretty cool. We now have our home media server up and running. We can watch our TV shows and movies from any device within our household, which is awesome. I no longer have to have my PC running 24 seven. I'm excited by this. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If there is anything else you would like to see me set up on the Raspberry Pi, let me know. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.